you are about to hear a romantic drama, Such a Charming Young Man, from Street and Smith's Love Story magazine, featuring the love story girl in the role of Eleanor Page. Yes, this is the love story of Eleanor Page, secretary to that immensely wealthy widow, Mrs. Alonzo P. Winters. We find Eleanor and Millie, who is the downstairs maid, in Mrs. Winters' spacious library. Millie is putting up fresh curtains. Eleanor is typing. It's early afternoon. There. Now that's the last of them, praise be. Nothing makes me dizzier than standing on a stepladder hanging curtains. Oh, well, they do look lovely, Millie. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Page. You know, I always think that next to fresh flowers, nothing spruces up a room as much as fresh curtains. Yes, and only flowers is easier. <laughs> well, here they come, turning in the drive. Who? The missus and that good-for-nothing jiggaloo she's gone and got herself. She ought to be ashamed of herself at her age, too. Oh, now, Millie, Mrs. Winters isn't so old. Well, she's old enough to be his mother, if you ask me. Millie. Yes, miss. What makes you think that Mr. Baxter is a gigolo? What else would he be? Well, I don't know. He might be a visiting relative or something. Well, you don't pay relatives $100 a week just for visiting. Who told you he gets $100 a week? Nobody. She left his check a line there for him on the mantelpiece last Friday, and I saw it. $100 a week. What does he do for it? Does he wash the car? Does he answer the door? Does he take the dogs walking? He does not. Oh, she. Probably hires him more as a companion. Mm -hmm. Companion is right. She don't never put a foot outside this house with what he's a-tagging along. He's with her every minute of the day, when she plays golf, when she goes to church, when she goes to town, when he takes lunch at the club, when she goes marketing, even when she steps out to pick a couple of flowers. There's Mr. John Baxter, as close to her as her own shadow. Hmm. Wonder what she does with them nights. Millie. Oh, you needn't look so shocked. It's the talk of the town. The butler over at Peabody's was just telling Cook that night before last... Millie, I'm not going to listen to any more backstairs gossip about anything connected with Mrs. Winters. Well, if you ask me, you're kind of stuck on him yourself. Certainly not. <laughs> not that I blame you much. He's not bad looking. But don't let Mrs. Winters catch you at it. Not if you want to keep your job. Millie, don't you think you'd... Better take that ladder away. You've quite finished in here. Oh, well. Very well. If that's the way you're going to take a little bit of friendly advice, I'm going. And I'm taking the ladder with me. Never fear. Gigolo. I, I don't believe a word of it. Still, she does pay him a hundred a week. And he's always with her. Oh, what the heck? It's no concern of mine. Drat it. How do you spell metabolism? Now, wait a minute. M E T A B. No. What is it? An A and a, or no? Need any help? Oh, how do you spell. Oh, it's you. John Baxter Esquire, at your service. Never mind. I'll look it up in the dictionary. You wouldn't know anyway. Know what? How to spell metabolism. M E T A B O L I S M. Oh, thanks. And uh, there's something else I know. Yes? You have the most amazing blue-green eyes I've ever seen. Thanks, but don't you think it's a little too early in the day for compliments? Why, no, do you? But I thought most girls loved them. Any time at all. I'm not a girl. I'm Mrs. Winter's secretary. Oh? Just a machine? Exactly. It's a waste of time to compliment a machine. I wonder. This is the machine age, they tell me. Personally, I've always been crazy about machinery. Will you please go somewhere else? Can't you see I'm busy typing? Mm-hmm. I'll go just as soon as I try a little experiment I've had in mind ever since I came here four weeks ago. What's that? This. You, you keep away from me. I... Uh-huh. Oh, how, how dare you? How dare you oh, kid me? It's just me? my scientific mind. I simply had to find out. Find out what? If you're always a block of ice. Oh, really? And you're not. Oh, decidedly not. Why, you, you... Oh, can't. there you are, John. I've been looking all over for you. Uh, yes, Mrs. Winters? I promised Mr. Lenz down at the mill I'd bring him those papers this afternoon, but I have such a wretched headache. I... Well, why not let me take them for you, Mrs. Winters? Would you, my dear? I'd appreciate oh, it. Well, of course I would. Good. John can drive you. The air will do you both good. Right, I'll go get the car. But, Mrs. Winters, I'm quite capable of driving myself. It's not necessary for Mr. Oh, Baxter. Oh, fiddlesticks. To... I won't need him. 
I'm going to take a nap. A little young companionship will do you good, Eleanor, and John is such an attractive young man, don't you think? Well, I really haven't had time to notice. <laughs> you young people always so unobservant. Now, before you get to the factory, you might tell him to wipe your lipstick off his chin. Nice day, isn't it? Very. No, May's my favorite month. I said uh, May is my favorite month. I heard you. Mm. Uh, you're not a very chatty young lady, are you? I don't believe in distracting the driver. Well, we've delivered the papers. Now I've got to get home. I have a good deal of typing to do before dinner. Now, just why are you stopping here? Now, this is where we get out. And just why do you think I should get out? Well, see the sign over that door? Ye old English tea shop. Mrs. Winters told me to take you to tea somewhere. This place seems to be as good as any. I don't like tea. Well, then you can have pink lemonade or ginger beer or anything else your little heart desires. But out you get if I have to carry you. Oh, it wasn't so bad. Two cups of tea and three slices of toast with jam. Not bad at all for a young lady with a firm prejudice against the old English custom of drinking tea. Well, it, it did taste sort of good after all. Of course it did. You know something? What? I'll bet a lot of your other prejudices are just as open to persuasion. Oh? Mm-hmm. I'll bet you could even learn to like me if you tried hard enough. Sorry, I haven't the time. And besides, aren't you forgetting that Mrs. Winters has first call on your, your attention? Oh, Eleanor, you idiot. Don't you know that my relations with Mrs. Winters are strictly business? I should say they are. She pays you a hundred dollars a week for them. Well, you're a funny girl. Come to think of it, I, I think maybe you're the funniest female I've ever met. You know, maybe that's why you're the only one I've ever really been in love with. Oh, oh, don't be ridiculous. You, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't I? Certainly not. Look here, Eleanor. Let's get this thing straight. I love you. Rubbish. And what's more, I've got a pretty strong hunch you kind of care for me. Well, of all the conceit, I, I don't care whether you live or die. Oh, of course you do. You let me know that when I kissed you in the library. I did no such thing. Mm-hmm. I'd swear I was right. Still, I'm perfectly willing to be convinced. Uh, shall we try it again? Certainly not. What would people think? Well, who's going to see? These high back benches make a very good screen. Don't you come an inch nearer. It's getting late. I'm going out to the car. No, 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 you're not. Not until I prove my point. Eleanor. Well, there you are, you see. I hate you. I always will. You want to make any bets on you, that? You get out of my way. getting dark, and we've at least seven more miles to go. I was a fool to keep you out so late. You're telling me. Oh, don't tell me you're still mad. Naturally. Well, why do you keep watching the rearview mirror like that? Well, there's a dark green car back there. It's been following us for the last five miles. Well, what of it? I don't like it. They haven't any headlights. Well, that's not very sinister. It isn't very dark yet. Surely you don't think... Oh, what was that? Duck, get down on the floor. What? There, there's a round hole in the windshield. I know it. They're shooting at us. Duck down on the floor, doggone it. <coughs> the glass caught you? No, at least I don't think so. Good. Hand me the revolver that's in that side pocket You're there. not going to shoot them. If they don't get me first, give me that gun. Here. Oh, you're, you're slowing down. They'll catch up. Yeah, I want to get them within range. They're getting awfully close. Keep down now, I tell you. There's a police booth around the next bend in the road. You'd think they'd hear the shooting. Well, they're getting closer. Closer. Now. <laughs> Them. That car smashed into the telegraph post. Oh, oh, John, it was horrible. Easy. Take it easy. It's all right now. Here come the police. Oh, thank heaven. 
Hey, you, what do you think you're doing? Oh, hello, Baxter. I didn't recognize you at first. Hey, what's going on here? It's the Carfetti gang, the one that's been threatening Mrs. Winters. Oh, I see, and they mistook this young lady for her and tried to pull off the snatch, huh? Snatch? He means kidnapping. <laughs> Lucky for you, miss, you're keeping company with one of the best little old pistol shots in the country, or you wouldn't be here now. Oh, John. Well, I'll be mosing along, helping the rest of the boys to unwrap that telephone post. John, then you... you were really Mrs. Winter's bodyguard all along. Well, yes, in a way. Although it's not my regular profession, I just signed on for the duration of the war, as you might say. You see, my old man's a great friend of the commissioners, and when I found they needed a good shot to protect Mrs. Winter's, well... I was only too happy to oblige. Oh, and to think that I suspected you of being a gigolo. Oh, well, that wasn't entirely your fault. They thought it would be a good idea to spread that rumor so the gang wouldn't be scared off. I must say I wasn't too keen about that angle of the case, but, well, it did have its compensations, meaning a certain young lady named Eleanor. Oh, John, you were wonderful, but you've got to promise me you won't let... That thing get to be a habit. What, you mean kissing you? No, that is... I mean this gang-busting business. Oh, that. Yes, that. Why, John, darling, you, you might have been killed. Oh, then I take it you do care whether I live or die. Oh, you know I do. And you don't hate me anymore? I never did, not really. And you wouldn't object too strenuously if I said I wanted to kiss you again? I'd hate you if you ever stopped wanting to. That's all I wanted to know. You have been listening to a romance featuring the Love Story Girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine. Listen for the Love Story Girl in a new romance next week. <laughs>